Sorry about that. Um, so this is what was known as a turtle back helmet. Um, or a turtle helmet, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, basically, uh, it overran slash overtook the earlier helmet. This is known as a Mark III turtle helmet. Because uh, if you look at it, it's in the shape of a turtle and looks a bit like a turtle. And it overtook from this, which was the called the Mark II Tommy helmet. So and that's what it looks like. However, the Mark II Tommy helmet or the Brody helmet, which I don't like calling it that because it just sounds rather stupid, um, even though that's the official name for it. Um, so yeah, that's that. This was, however, still used during the Second World War, even on D-Day. Because I believe, if you look, you can see the Canadian soldiers landing on Juno wear these. Uh, so, yep, this was very common used throughout the war. And these were also given to I believe the Dutch or Danish army or something like that. Uh, and this is a, a Danish army one uh, that is had the um, stampings on the inside um, changed. Basically the line has changed but I believe the actual shell was originally British. So there's that. Um, so that's that's the helmets that we used really. Um, except for the helmet there. That was common on both Mark II and Mark III. Um, so that's, that's basically the helmets that we used. Um, these were very durable because I have actually seen an original World II helmet um, Mark II that someone was wearing in North Africa. Got shot at by a sniper. Bullet ended here, left here. And there's a massive hole in it and it took the liner completely off the inside of the helmet. But the guy survived with only concussion, no cuts, nothing. I think that just show, shows the durability of these helmets. Um, however, the big problem with these are is that if you're wearing them and they do that, big kind of surface area, so it kind of gives it your look liable if you have a chin strap on and someone say shoots you here, it's going to strangle you. Or if someone tries to take you out by grabbing the front of the hand, it can easily strangle you. So, yep, yeah, and the design of it was designed, the earlier one, was designed so that, that it would give you more protection around here. Designed off a medieval thing. It, um, and the, the difference really between them, to show you the later one and the earlier one, uh, was that this one kind of was more angled, and so therefore it meant that you could have it slightly thinner, it would, the rounds that hit it would glance off more, if you get what I mean. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'd, I would probably say that my favourite one has to be the Tommy helmet because it's just really iconic but um, and it just looks more awesome than this one but this one's still pretty good and it's very very useful and it's very strong so yeah uh, this one has I believe had a post-war liner put into it in the 80s but I believe the shell's original um, I've also got um, another one of these that I'm trying to restore in. it's got an original shell uh, uh, and, an, and an original line apart from what's happened is it's been painted in this disgusting NATO green colour um, and the line is 1950s dated but so what um, so that is the helmets covered so the main headdress that was worn whilst you were not wearing your um, helmet was either one of these, which is a full service cap. These originated in the 19th century um, and 
they used in the First and Second World War. Um, this one's the original uh, 1941 dated example. The interesting thing about this is that the person who owned it before stitched their name in it and RE for Royal Engineers. Um, and so it was designed so that you would have a badge and it would have uh, a split pin that would run through the back through both of and and it would secure there. Uh, this was replaced in 1941 I believe uh, by the uh, GS Berry or General Service Berry which basically is a big floppy berry. I don't have one. Um, I have a 1950s beret, but it's the wrong size, but it's a bright colour though. Um, so yeah, I did, I've managed to misplace my uh, Wiltshire Regiment um, cat badge somewhere. Uh, so, that's that. Um, so pretty good. Uh, now the buttons on this, I don't know if you can see, but those are just general service army buttons. And because uh, in the 1880s, I think it was 1883, the British Army uh, changed its design and its all its regiment system because originally uh, the, reg the um, British Army uh, was um, had numbers for their regiment, so you'd have the 24th Regiment of Foot was the Welsh one, the famous one from um, the the Zulu one, and then that turned into the Welsh Border Regiment or something like that. Um, and yeah, I heard that the British Army um, stroke striked uh, when they when they had their numbers changed because they were so displeased um, with having the Shire names um, of their regiments. So yeah, I have got my Wiltshire Regiment cap badge, apart from it's the, f the First World War cap badge. And so, the difference between it and the Second World War cap badges are that with the Second World War cap badges, um, they had to... Um, so the se Second World War ones, well, all that, like the ones that it's like before that, um, to have the split pin. And then the First World War ones didn't, so they could be fitted onto a SD cap like this. So anyway, seeing as this isn't about the early war, this kind of is not really acceptable for a late war, but it's acceptable. Because um, there might have been some units that still had some of these, and you can still see of RAF chappies with them. Um, so, um, yeah.